Yay. Okay. So, um, if, <laughs> if you remember, I did that video on the Nosferatu video game. Now, at that time, I said that I would do more videos on video games. And obviously, I forgot. <laughs> well, I was going through videos, uh, uh, my past videos, and um, I saw, of course, the videos for my video games. And so that's where we're at. <laughs> And I decided to choose this one, SPQR, The Empire's Darkest Hour. I don't know why this one sticks out for me. <laughs> I would, you know, I would love it if it was on Steam. Every once in a while, I look on Steam or even good old games to see if it's up. It never is. <laughs> Big old sad face. Because I, I didn't get very far in this game. It was... <laughs> <laughs> I would get so frustrated and and I there are times when my brother and I will be talking about video games and I mentioned this game and he said well I got this far and I was like well you got further than I did that's for sure <laughs> so let's talk about SPQR The Empire's Darkest Hour this is I know that there are other games that are titled uh, SPQR and uh, or that's like Rome's Darkest Hour or whatever. Okay, this one was released in North America in 1996, in Japan and Europe in 1997. So just so we're clear which one we're talking about. <laughs> now, the graphics are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, they are a lot like the graphics that you see in Mist, which was released three years earlier in 1993, there were, <laughs> you know, this happens all the time. So like Mist was released, you see those beautiful graphics and everything. And then of course other games are like, well, we want to do that too. You know, other uh, companies say, well, you know, people like that. So we got to do the same thing. And um, so, but you know what? In something like the gaming industry, it helps push forward. <laughs> That's why we have video games now. The characters look like they're in the room with us. So, you know, <laughs> instead of the little 8-bit eight, <laughs> eight pixels anymore. And um, so, yeah, the, the graphics, you know, <laughs> now I, I was trying to find... Uh, reviews on this game I did find one from 2000 so we're going to take a look at that and one thing that this person said was you know it it says that it's 3D but <laughs> here's the thing about 3D is that it has evolved so much so much <laughs> <laughs> just like I was saying earlier about the fact that the characters look like they're in the room with you. It looks like an actual person is there, you know, when you're playing the the football, like the Madden football, and it looks like actual players are in the room with you when you're playing. And so, yeah, that's, <laughs> that wasn't even close to what it was in 2000. It wasn't anything like how it was in like 1996 so but again the concept of 3d has evolved and so but <laughs> and even just you know there are games well just like a couple of the the star wars games would claim I don't know that it was the Star Wars games, but I'll use that as, as an example. Uh, they would use video footage for like the hologram. It was actors, video footage for hologram uh, effect in the game. It, it wasn't uh, um, 
uh, what am I trying to say? 3D or or graphics or anything. No, it was video footage that they placed in the video. There were a lot of video games that had that. And there were games that were saying that that was 3D effect. It's not 3D effect. You you shoved a, <laughs> a few of the, the Carmen Sandiego uh, did that. And uh, so... Um, but as for claiming that it was 3D, I don't think that Carmen San Diego did that. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, to actually be able to say that you lived through the evolution of 3D <laughs> in games. Oh, yeah. I'm ancient as the hills. I, I've said it before. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 that's just the thing about it is, is um you know what was considered 3d in 96 is not the same as it was in 2000 is he wrong no um not by any means i'm not saying that he's wrong at all and um he's just going by what he knows at that time <laughs> just like if somebody now were to review this game they're so used to the to the games now and everything. Yeah, it's 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 just, anyway. It's, it's mind boggling just how quickly uh 3D has evolved. It may not seem like it, but for me it has it does. I just, So this is a uh, one of those puzzle games. Uh, again, a lot like Mist. Before you get the wrong idea, this is nothing like Mist. Okay, <laughs> no, Mist is. If you've played Mist, um, it's one of those that is very brain teaser. You have to use <laughs> all your brain muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know I've talked about that one. I may redo that video. And I remember when I had the old laptop, um, I started to play it and <laughs> I may try that again. And um, but anyway, so with Mist, it's a lot harder. The the puzzles are a lot harder. This one, the puzzles aren't so much harder. They're just annoying. <laughs> it was for us i don't know how it was for everybody else and even the the gentleman who who uh did the review said if you have a lot of patience then you, you can he, he said it's worth playing at least once so <laughs> And so, yeah, it's it's a lot of puzzles. I mean, like, even uh, Legend of Zelda and a lot of those are uh, a lot of puzzles. So, um, brain teaser type and and everything. So the story, the premise, is that you're an unknown character. And you're friends with an inventor named Cornelius. And he's in prison because he's accused of being um, part of this conspiracy to destroy Rome. There's a criminal out there who is planning on destroying Rome. Okay. And so you go down, you, the game starts out with you go into Cornelius's workshop and that's where you find out because there's like on his bench or on his table, there's like these scrolls and you go through and that's where you find out that he has been imprisoned. And, and that's where the, the message is that he's been imprisoned. So, um, now, this is where it goes with the the calamitous the calamitous is a figure who intends to destroy rome so you have to find the criminal okay there's lucius who is a retired soldier 
uh, who is now a private investigator, and he spends his days drinking in the wine shop. Now, before I just <laughs> quit altogether, um, I was supposed to try and find Lucius. All right. There is also uh, Verania. She's head of Vestal Virgin, who is thinking of retirement. Xanthus, one of uh, Gordian's assistants who claims to be Greek, but is actually a barbarian. Sybil, a prophetess who runs a small stall, but later works for the Roman emperor. And Gordian is an architect who is using the spare money from projects to build his own temple. All right. This actually reminds me <laughs> one puzzle that just pissed me off to no end. Okay. And I believe it was that I had to go down this well or down in the sewers and pick up three coins. And you needed these coins to uh, use the cart to go somewhere else or like a carriage to go somewhere else. You had to pay to use, oh my gosh. And I don't know what it was, but every time I tried to pick up these coins, I couldn't pick up the coins. I would click on them, everything, and they would. It was like they would raise up, because items that you had to that you would click on, they would raise up. Like this is what you want, and then you click on them again, and it would go in your inventory. They would raise up, but then they would just. <laughs> it's like yes, take it. <laughs> and um. I hated that puzzle. <laughs> I spent more time trying to pick up those coins than anything else. And <laughs> I was getting so frustrated with those stupid coins. So there's also some time travel because you're told about this thing called the Navator. And it's a machine that allows uh, you to wander around Rome in the comfort of uh, Cornelius's workshop. When you activate it, it um, you can pick up objects and use them in other places, as well as travel in time and view uh, the subjects that were listed just now. You can uh, see their diaries. And... Um, one thing that my brother told me when he was, because I, I don't remember being able to actually uh, use the Navator. So maybe that was my issue there. Because I, <laughs> maybe that's, that was the whole problem there. Yeah, I don't remember actually activating the Navator. But, um, but he said that, one of the problems with the Navator was that the Navator would shut down. And he said the big issue there was that he always thought that either the computer was cutting out or that uh, the game was shutting down. But it was just the Navator was shutting down and then you had to fix it. They should have done a better job of making you think. <laughs> yeah, that would that would bother me a lot. And um, I so he said that he finally figured out how to uh, decipher that it was just yeah, but it was still <laughs> frustrating. And so you're. You go around in the streets and you, and, but here's a problem is, so in a, f a few areas that I was able to read stuff, it talked about all of these festivals that would happen and all of the different uh, celebrations. There were no people. Like you were the only one wandering around in in this, and the review, which I'll link it in the description box, but the review talked about 
how there's lack of people. <laughs> there's like nobody. I mean, the the fact that you're you're playing Dick Tracy over here, you would think that you would have to talk to these people and and question them. Nothing. And and for a, a city that's known for their celebration, I understand that it's a, a dark hour, but even then, there should be people around. I mean, <laughs> it just, it was so weird and bizarre that it didn't, yeah, that, that was... I mean, you, you think about uh, like Indiana Jones and the fate of Atlantis. They even had a uh, background and, and they even had other people that you talked to. This had nothing. <laughs> it was, it's very, very odd. That the, they wouldn't have at least a few people in there that you would talk to. Because again, why would they mention the celebrations and there's nothing? It was like the day after an apocalyptic event and you're the only one that survived. <laughs> so... um. I mean, so, yeah, I didn't get through it. I've said before, I, I look on Steam and everything, and I don't know how it ends. My brother didn't know how it ends. He got further in the game than I did. Um, so let's let's look at this review here. I've talked a little bit about it, and... Yeah, he mentions a few other ones. He says, uh, a puzzle adventure rooted firmly in the tradition of games like Myst, Shivers, Lighthouse, Jewels of the Oracle, and Time Lapse. Um, prevent the destruction of ancient Rome in 205 AD by an unknown saboteur known only as the Calamitous. Um, I mean, yeah, again, it's it's a great concept. It's just... <laughs> I I just had a hard time getting through it, especially with that coin thing. And oh, try and I especially I I pretty much quit when I was having to find Lucius, and I could because I would have to go forward, and it was like okay it wouldn't let me go into a, a building i remember that too it was like there was a building that it was telling me maybe lucius is here why don't you go in and it was like i it'd be great if you just let me go in <laughs> it was like all i ever saw was the outside of you know the the streets the down in the sewer or the well or wherever it was where those coins were and then Cornelius's uh, workshop. That's all I ever saw. Um, yeah, he's going through what the... Okay, so here he talks about the 3D. So uh, it builds itself as a 3D adventure. It's not really the case. You can't look up or down at will and your movement through the various locales is displayed through a series of still screens just like mist um in short you can't go where you want to go but only along a path that's already been determined not exactly what i'd call 3d i mean again it, it's um but it's also the animation is more what they're talking about uh and and but he is right about the navigation of it it's <laughs> it's predetermined um and all of that and again i uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. And the upside is that the graphics are excellent. They really are. Uh, almost photorealistic at times. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, um, is that this is an accurate representation of ancient Rome, at least according to developers of cyber sites. Yeah, um, and you have to think about this was before, this is four years before Gladiator came out. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, let's see, especially when you add in the background material on Roman architecture, culture, politics, religion, and more found in each suspect's notebooks. It, and here it is. Uh, there's one thing missing from all the beautiful scenery, people. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you go through and it's not, I mean, games that I have played, oh, wh what is that? Uh, like the Elden Scrolls and, and, the, and those, and those types of games where it's the open world and, and you're just walking through and they have animated characters. <laughs> Legend of Zelda, one, my favorite game, Zelda has all these random characters that you can interact with. You know, <laughs> it just, I, I don't get it. I, I, I just, In, in every single Zelda game, there are those memorable characters. Like in um, Link Between Ro Worlds, there's the guy that likes bees. <laughs> <laughs> they make memorable characters like that. <laughs> and of course, in, in um, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, you're in Monte Carlo. And when you talk to random people and <laughs> they're almost disgusted with Indy for the, the guy who is so happy to get that Mesopotamian uh, slab <laughs> and you find out that Indiana Jones doesn't is just terrible at his job and you could go down the list of all these different games where they have these random characters and this one there's nobody on the streets and it's like the journal entries refer to huge religious festivals political events and other gatherings that you'd expect to see on the navator as you move through the city i mean rome was notorious for this now in mist because of what's going on you don't expect to run into anybody. That makes sense. Okay. That makes perfect sense. But come on. <laughs> Even though there is, it's the darkest hour. I don't get it. Even soldiers, you would think soldiers would be standing. They always had soldiers wandering around. I don't get it. Yet it appears that someone, Cornelius perhaps, has focused some weird death ray on the Eternal City, leaving the building buildings intact, but somehow reducing the inhabitants to dust. <laughs> That's never good. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, it does nothing to portray the, the vibrant nature of one of the world's greatest cities. Uh, it's like a diorama, but without any model people. And and I agree with that. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to read all of it. I will, of course, put it in the description box. It's, it's a, a great review of the game. Um, I agree with a lot of what uh, this person has to say about it. Um, <laughs> I would love to play it in my adult life and see what it's like. It was very frustrating for me. I didn't get through it. I was trying to find Lucius. 
and never found him. Now, I don't remember activating the Navator. Maybe that was my problem. <laughs> I would not be surprised. You know, there are so many of these games that I play where I, <laughs> I don't do things in order. Come to find out the first Zelda game, those dungeons have to be done in order. I didn't know that. <laughs> So, well all right then <laughs> does it really matter i don't think it really does but <laughs> but, but yeah there there's so many of those where it, it has to be done in order or you know and apparently this is another one of those things that <laughs> so but anyway this is spqr the Empire's Darkest Hour. It was released in 1996 uh, in Europe and Japan in 1997. Um, I would love for it to be released again because I would love to play it in my adult life. 